Well, according to the Tallahassee Democrat, 30,000 people came to our inaugural event. It was the biggest, the most amazing, and we, you know, we did it the following year. Um, and that was my first startup. So I was really bugged, right? This is now fast forward in the future, 2009. And I kept thinking back, what was it, what was it, what was it of the Southern Shakespeare Festival? Why was I able to launch such an amazing thing, right? You know, what? I didn't have any skills and everything. Else. And I finally dawned on me that basically that archangel, which in my case the archangel was uh, uh, Dean Emeritus Richard Fallon, was my archangel. And it was that archangel that made it happen. So he didn't make it happen. I made it happen. But I rode on his wings, right? I rode on his name. I rode on his belief in me. And that soared to me to such heights that nothing could stop me from achieving it. That's all I needed. I just needed someone to believe in me and get behind me, right? And for the last seven years, I have been looking for that person for seven years here. And in 2012, I was still looking for them, and I found a guy called Miha, and a group working on this small planet thing. And I was fed up, because I realized the likelihood of me finding an investor was, you know, I need to find one of the six out of 3,000. And not only that, I came up with another, another bit of the, of the, um, of the uh, law uh, called the law of paradigm diffusion, right? So not only did I have 6%, I also, I did, this was the last part, right? And this is what made me basically give up on looking for funds. Because what I realized with paradigms, there are four, four, four steps removed. The further removed the paradigm is, right, the less likely the person's going to get it. Well, basically only, to what it, so basically it said only 2.5% of those investors, should they have exposure to the paradigm, right, would basically be my leap of faith investor. Since I knew that no one had exposure to what I want to do because the paradigm shift, it didn't exist, right? All there is, is, you know, is the startup and I'm trying to bring about something completely new. So I was like, there's no way. And I walked away into permaculture. So, but before I did, I had one last hope. I heard about this, this Bitcoin stuff. I said, I'm going to just go out there. I'm going to just wildcard it and see if I can get these guys to get behind what I'm doing, right? So... Ultimately, um, I pitched and I shared everything. I was, you know, I was a startup guy. I was keeping all this stuff secret. But with Mihai, I explained everything. I went through the whole system. And basically, by the end of our week-long kind of talk and everything, we spent about a week. And we had a great, amazing bond. He goes, you know what? What you've done, you know, your vision completes what we're working on. He never told me specifically what it was, right? It doesn't matter. Because ultimately, you know, what, what Michal and the Ethereum Foundation built was a much better version. Let me explain that. I was trying to build Encarta. Encarta was the encyclopedia system. It was a centralized, basically, uh, non-open source version of um, Ethereum, right? That was what I was trying to build. I had no idea that you could build the Wikipedia equivalent. So in many respects, what we did was we jumped it. I know we could have built the Encarta version, right? If I got funding and everything else, and then it would have been disrupted by the, um, you know, by the blockchain version, right? So the simple fact that I didn't build it as the Encarta version, right, was actually good because ultimately it, I would have been disrupted anyway. And the other thing is, um, ultimately, it, I didn't have to build it because it was done by um, Ethereum. But I didn't learn about it until Mihao accidentally Skyped me in 2014, responding to one of my posts. I was on, basically by then I was back on the FoundUps and I was launching FoundUps, um, you know, kind of like um, via the hardware and trying to bootstrap them. And, you know, these are little projects, right? And I've launched a bunch of them, but they're not, you know, they, it, it, they don't have the engine behind it. It's kind of like, it's, 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 it's found up some practice or living the found up lifestyle. So when I heard Stephen uh, Tao basically describing what Ethereum was, I about, you know, my jaw hit the ground. I was like, this is found ups. This is the open innovation framework that I had shared with Nihao. How is it? What is his relationship with this thing? He was working on it, right? 
How do I know him? Because I'd forgotten about our relationship because it was two years later and I have lots of people. So I went back into our Skype logs and I was like, holy shit, this is the guy that I shared everything with. And now here is the thing that I had described to him that actually exists, right? In every little bit. So I had marked up, you know, and I was like, Mihal, this is, this is Oif. This is what I shared with you, right? And he quickly cut me off, right? And um, so then being me, I went, and he was a co-founder, by the way, of Ethereum then. He quickly went, and I went to Stephen Tao and said, we need to meet, dude. You know, um, I played a role in, you know, in, in Meow. There's a lot of things here. I want, I want to be part of what you're doing and everything else. Um, there's, there's a history here. And they just cut me off, right? And I'm like, what the fuck? And, and maybe I came off a little with, hard with my ego because I had my ego hurt before. And here it was being hurt again. And um, um, I was going, left, left feeling like, oh shit. But then on the other side, I said, well, they built it. They built it. There's opportunity. There's opportunity. And it's still early. And it was an alpha. And I said, we got to let it mature and develop and everything else. So basically, then what happened was um, I, in June of 2016, I'm just working in the States, right? Um, and I hear about the DAO hack. Or was I here by June? I think it may have been back by June, no, July, June, July. I came back June. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was either here or in the States. I can't remember when. But the moment I heard the DAO was hacked, and the DAO is, is, is basically what I call open corporations in, my, in the earlier version, right? Because I didn't know the, the, the language or the description to call it. I knew basically that this was time. Because as a gamer, when you hack something, you fix something. Usually it takes a big hack, and them stealing $50 million was, was huge. So I thought, this is the time for us to move forward. So the other thing I realized is that a long time ago, 2014, I had set up an Ethereum room in LinkedIn. And my Ethereum room had like something like 600 names on it, right, for, for you know, wanting to join. I was like, holy cow. You know, and that told me also that Ethereum was gaining traction. So, so the room was filled. I started like basically um, reaching out to folks. I started waking up the team and, and, uh, and, and it was that point that I found um, my archangel. And it's someone who's been in, in Ethereum, someone who has been on the board, someone who is there. And uh, I, you know, I talked to him, he looked at it. He's like, Mike, I want to help you launch this. And I was like, finally, finally, after so many years, after seven years, I found the one person that could potentially help us bring founders forward. And not only that, all right, something else interesting happened. Instead of them basically allowing the hack to happen and the guy to walk off, they, um, they were greedy and they said, well, they, they decided to do basically a rollback. And a rollback means you're going to go back in time and start a new kind of iteration of the software, right? So the original iteration is left. However, it's the, you know, it's, it's the official king, right? And the old, uh, in the, in the, in the bastard child basically is the new one, right? So the old king is the throne for the new bastard child, which is the fork. So, um, and the other thing that happened is, uh, what I learned was all the inside crap going on in Ethereum. And let me tell you, right? It is a game of thrones. There, you know, the, the, the former CEO left and the, the, the two main coders left to do something else. I mean, it has been nothing but, you know, um, but just all sorts of adversity. Not only that, it's funny because one of my team members, um, I call him the Grand Inquisitioner, in 2014, when we were thinking about launching and we're looking at Made Safe and other things, what should we use? So he goes, Michael, he's a great guy. He's the type of guy, he, does, he's, he lives completely off the grid. And, uh, you know, he basically builds all his computers from what he finds in the dumpster, right? That's how amazing he is. He goes, Michael, you know, I really don't like Ethereum. I'm looking at the code. I'm seeing a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, you know, um, hands in it. And I think they're going to sell out to corporate America, right? And I trust my team. And this is, I have to trust him. I said, okay, well, then let's uh, hold off on that. And let's look at other possibilities. And basically we lost a little... Steam, right? We looked at other possibilities and I went back to life and he went back to life and it's 2016 later. 
and the hack happens. And I basically say, guys, the hack happened. Here's an opportunity. There's something going on here, right? So I start waking up and sending out the team and assembling the team again. Well, it turns out that, let me tell you what's happened in the Game of Thrones, right? So think of Classic is the original. Classic is the, is the king. And, um, and we're going to call it uh, the cartel is the new one. So the cartel is looking to basically replace Classic because Classic, um, someone within the government stole a bunch, or not within the government, but someone came in and robbed his treasuries. And they wanted to use their magic spells and they went back in the time. It's called a, a rollback, right? A fork go back in time where this never happened and there and create a new alternative reality, right? For the cartel to, to keep their stuff. And, and ultimately they assumed that classic would die, right? They just assumed, um, being the cartel and having all the power and really centralized and, you know, Merrill Lynch is, is behind them. Uh, there is consensus. There's big VC firms, um, you know, who are all, basically in bed with the cartel. And I have, in, I have basically, I'm gonna share this uh, image right here on this video, um, or I'll link to it, where you can see that, I'll actually link to it to my uh, Patreon page, that you can actually see it, where you can see the cartel screaming at the COO, Joe, uh, 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 Lupin, right, Ludin, Lubin, right, Lubin, big BC, right? who's the founder of Consensus, that, uh, you know, to respond to him because I just announced him that I was doing a talk. Now, let me tell you about that talk. Well, how, why did I do the talk? Well, I bought my ticket to go to Ethereum and, and I said, hey, I'd like to talk to the PR guy. He said, yeah, sure, submit us your ideas and we'll put you on, the, you know, and we'll see what we can do. Well, basi uh, basically, I didn't read the email that well, and I, you know, he got back to me, so well, we only have 15 minute slots. I said, well, that's fine, I'll do a 15 minute slot, okay? That would be great. And um, I just took it like I was on the list, and I went off. And I'm still talking to another guy from the, from the, um, um, the blockchain summit, okay? And uh, they said to me, uh, well, let's see your confirmation email and we'll give you the discount. So I said, uh, oh, let me, okay, I'll send it to you. I looked at the email and said, oh, shit, this isn't confirmation. This is just let me know that I'm on the list. And I realized that there's no way in hell these, these guys are going to let me talk, given the history they know me. And the thing is, is George, who was the PR guy, that has no history with me. He doesn't know from me from scrap. So I quickly wrote an email, right, before to preempt him the no, the negative, like, hey, I know there's going to be lots of people going to talk. I'm going to set up um, basically a kickoff for Foundups. I'm going to launch on the 18th, and I'm going to speak, and there's people at the 18th, and I'm going to hold these events at 9 o'clock, right, to just talk about Foundups and what I'm working on to share my vision because, I, you know, I probably your, your agenda is going to be full. And I sent that to him, and I said, well, I'll make sure that doesn't conflict or anything else on that. So um, anyway, the... Um, um, uh, he comes back to me and says, well, our thing's filled. I said, well, that's not a problem because I've got this, you know, like I told you, I'm going to be doing this, this event. I'll see you there. And when are you arriving? La, 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 la. So what happened then is this, is this, the, the, the hard fork happened, right? All this happened kind of at the same time. And the attack on Bitrix, which really was, it's kind of like the mastermind attack onto the um, the funds. This is where the funds of ETC are held. Bitrex is a few others, right? Um, you just have to look, look at see which which ones are still trading ETC, and you will know. Um, and the and the drama too is is uh, because the former CEO Charles came back of, of Ethereum and said, "Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically uh, take over Classic." Well, here's the deal: Classic is the older brother. If Classic lives, it could come back and replace Ethereum, right? Or the cartel, the newer one, the new branch, the cartel, because it's the original one. It's the rightful heir, right? Uh, so um, all of this drama is still going on. There's lots, there's, there's a lot of activities. Um, and ultimately what started off was just an event for me to talk has now become UndevCon 2. So UndevCon 2 is is a completely open and it's created another found idea of mine called un 
xxx.com, which is um, the national or just the unconferences for all events out there. So every event, whether it's South uh, SX by SW, you name it, every event is going to have their un event to it. And these events are completely free, they're completely open, they're, or, they're self-organizing, it's an unconference, and they're happening on the web. And the idea is potentially they enhance and they give a voice to the 99% who don't get a chance to go to these top-down centralized events. And this is completely decentralized you know, events on the blockchain, right? So my name is Mike Trout. I hope you enjoyed my story. Um, I am now basically getting ready to... Um, um, Try to get the ETC guys to endorse and to come behind FoundUps. The problem with ETC or, or Classic is they, have, they don't really have a vision of where they're going, right? I want to be FoundUps. I want FoundUps to be the vision for where they're going, headed. I would like for us to be able to, um, you know, to, to work together and help me launch FoundUps because FoundUps changes everything. Um, and the beautiful thing is, is it also guarantees like all the money they have invested, like, you know, um, that it's, it, that money, the valuation will go up. So for me to basically launch found ups, we have to be, cons have consensus. So as the, car the cartel has the foundation, right, which is a centralized vehicle, it's a set up as a nonprofit. And the problem is, is nonprofits can be hijacked. And this is what's happened to Ethereum foundation. There's a, something called the Great Art Hijack. You can watch the video. But uh, the, the, the deal is Ethereum is weak. And let me talk about the problem with Ethereum, right? Ethereum is weak. Um, it is set up wrong. It's set up, it's, it's using the old basically structure. And it is, um, and ultimately because of their greed and their split, they, um, you know, they, uh, they, you know, they split themselves, weakening themselves, right? So, so in my view, this, this action of them splitting potentially has killed them, right? If Ethereum keeps going, and they know that. If Ethereum lives, they die. Now, my solution is to turn um, classic, um, not Ethereum, but ETC, right? They'll die if ETC lives, into something called core. We move away. We're separate. We, we kind of like, we create an alliance, and they can be Ethereum, and we'll be core. And core, for core to happen... I need consensus. What does that mean? It means I need the ETC community to get behind my vision, um, and they can go and read my vision, they can meet with me and everything else, um, and allow us to basically alter the blockchain, right, from what it is, and, and right now there's really no leadership, no one has consensus, I'm talking about the agreement, um, and ultimately, uh, if that happens, then we can do something really cool. See. There will be no entity for core. Core is a true blockchain thing. It will have an autonomous agent that drives it called the noodle. Um, the noodle is the entity. We would be a true DAO, a true autonomous organization. Um, and what that means is ultimately my role as core is I'm just the public head on it. I am the only point of attack. And if this head is cut off, it doesn't matter because someone else from core will stand up and be there, right? Um, if there is action we need to take, we form a corporation and I have core behind me, right? Um, as the head of core, I'm the public figure, but all you see is the head. The body of core is this decentralized web, right? So, um, and ultimately in establishing found ups, we disrupt the business model. We usher in the replacement, okay? And and it's it's and, and initially we're not replacing it, actually, we're just launching in parallel, and it will scale so much faster than anything else out there. My name is Mike Trout. I hope you enjoyed my, my talk today. And um, this is gonna be this is the end. And if you like what I'm doing, you can support what I'm doing. Go to our crowdfunding page, which you can just click on the link, and you can help Foundups launch. I hope you'll come to the events in, um, in Shanghai. I hope you'll be part of what I'm doing. I hope you'll take the time to read my white paper. It's unofficial. Um, I'm waiting for people far smarter than me to take my work and turn it into actual official paper. So thanks a lot. You take care now. Bye.